For those of you that may have followed my uh, music channel or my videos on music, you will know that I like to do lists, year by year lists, as to my favourite CDs or albums. I'm now going to start doing this for movies as well, um, and I've decided to pitch in and start with the 80s and of course that begins with 1980 this is going to be my top 10 movies from that year uh, before we get into the top 10 a few notables that didn't make the cut uh, Atlantic City with uh, Burt Lancaster and Susan Sarandon a great movie The Last Metro Francis Truffaut's uh, intriguing movie uh, uh, set in Paris and bad timing, Nicholas Rogue's uh, rather strange, nightmarish uh, uh, effort. And of course, Cruising, uh, directed by William Friedkin, an early role for Al Pacino. Uh, and finally, Dressed to Kill, uh, Brian De Palma's uh, nightmarish crime thriller starring Michael Caine. Okay, so those are the ones that didn't make the cut. Um, so let's get on to the ones that uh, did. And of course, uh, we start with uh, n number 10. And this is uh, an Australian movie called Breaker Morant, uh, directed by Bruce Ber Beresford. And it stars Edward Woodward uh, and Jack Thompson and Brian Brown. It's uh, basically uh, a historical movie focusing on the Boer War, uh, which took place at the turn of the 20th century in South Africa. Um, and basically the movie focuses on a military court-martial where uh, three uh, soldiers are being uh, accused of murder and the uh, court are there to decide on their guilt and if they are guilty they will uh, automatically uh, be sentenced to death by firing squad this is a tremendous drama a courtroom drama immersed in a, a, a room that bears no resemblance to a courtroom the performances are absolutely fantastic and uh, Jack Thompson as a, a sort of uh, as the defence lawyer, who certainly lacks any real experience in this type of uh, arena, is absolutely awesome. So I'd really recommend you watch this one. Um, and it uh, was uh, an, uh, part of the uh, Oscar season nominations uh, for adapted screenplay. To number nine then, this is Stardust Memories, written and directed by Woody Allen and starring Woody Allen. Alongside him uh, is Charlotte Rampling, who plays his romantic interest. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting movie. It's not as uh, full of... Uh, Woody Allen type jokes as some of his, his others um, it's basically uh, his character is uh, very uh, funny in parts but also um, he's full of self pity, very angry mean spirited and he basically uh, is unhappy with uh, the hardships of fame uh, and uh, tackles and attacks critics, studio executives, psychophants, fans, expectations, family members, you name it, uh, uh, his character, uh, Sandy Bates, uh, hasn't got a good word for any of them. And uh, we are at a stage where he's suffering from creative block, uh, his relationships are in a mess and he's overdosing on neurosis so uh, not too many surprises there but I particularly like this one uh, so that's number nine uh, Stardust Memories written and directed by Woody Allen so in at number eight is The Coal Miner's Daughter uh, directed by Michael Apted, produced by Bernard Swartz, and it's based on a autobiography of Loretta Lynn, the famous country music singer. 
Uh, Sissy Spacek uh, was in the lead role as Loretta Lynn, and Tommy Lee Jones played her uh, husband. And basically, it's based on a true story about how uh, Loretta, coming from a very poor family in Kentucky, uh, rose to become uh, one of the great uh, country music stars uh, after uh, a period of being a mother. Uh, uh, a, a wife and to all intents and, uh, uh, in, intents and purposes uh, being overshadowed by her rather uh, uh, chauvinistic husband played by Jones it's certainly a great performance by C Sissy Spacek she won uh, the Oscar and it was also nominated for Best Picture Adapted Screenplay and Cinematography so it's certainly well worth a, 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 a look so at number seven then is Ordinary People. Uh, this was probably the most successful uh, movie of that year and it uh, won a number of Oscars uh, including Best Picture, Best Director for Robert Redford in his uh, debut as a director, uh, Timothy Hutton won as Best Supporting Actor uh, Nominated in that category alongside Hutton was Ju Judd Hirsch, who played the psychiatrist, and it was also the winner of the Best Adapted uh, Screenplay. And it's basically a, a drama, a family drama, about uh, the son Timothy Hutton, a troubled teenager trying to cope with the accidental death of his big brother and it focuses on the uh, family dynamics the, the uh, mother who's a doting mother and an upbeat impervious,ly upbeat dad played by Sutherland and of course uh, Hutton uh, dealing with all his demons and uh, it's certainly a very highly charged movie uh, it focuses on psychological disor disorders and uh, fittingly uh, I think was uh, the best film of the year at six The Long Good Friday directed by John McKenzie and uh, this is a movie set in London it's uh, about uh, ganglands uh, in London the uh, organized crime and it stars Bob Hoskins in the lead role as Harold Shan, Victoria is his doting a wife played by Heron Midham, Charlie uh, is played by Eddie Constantine and he is uh, a representative of uh, business from the States, business being an analogy for organised crime. Basically uh, the movie traces the uh, life uh, and activities of Harold uh, as he tries to uh, dominate the organized crime within London and he uh, has to face an unexpected challenge when a bomb goes off and kills two of his soldiers and he is determined to resolve this matter as it's uh, particularly significant if he wants to do business with the Americans and uh, we follow the exploits it's a pretty brutal affair the acting is first class uh, Hoskins particularly memorable and also his uh, doting wife Mirren looking uh, loquacious and uh, beautiful throughout give it a look there's also a very early role of one Pierce Brosden at, towards the end The Long Good Friday at number five then is The Elephant Man uh, this uh, infamous film directed by David Lynch and starring uh, Anthony Hopkins as the Doctor Frederick Trevis and John Hurt in the lead role as John Merrick uh, basically the story surrounds a real life tri real true story about uh, the man John Merrick who in the late 1880s in London is found by the doctor performing in uh, ridiculous shows uh, because of his grotesque uh, elephant like uh, uh, physique and uh, the doctor uh, takes it upon himself 
to take care of John uh, uh, also finding out about uh, the circumstances surrounding his uh, disease and he de was deformed at birth and his head's twice the normal size and he's got a twisted spine and he's basically uh, an extremely ugly person but his uh, brain, his mind and his personality are as meek as mild as you can find um, it's a tremendous performance by Hurt uh, in the lead role and the movie uh, uh, my, the movie demanded uh, recognition at the awards uh, season and the Oscars uh, gave it a best picture nomination David Lynch the director was uh, also nominated and all, uh, John Hurt uh, uh, was nominated for best actor and it also got a, an adapted screenplay it's a very very sensitively sad uh, tale of a, a gentle man who was uh, unfortunately uh, given a, a bad deck uh, upon birth. Uh, get to watch it. Marvellous stuff. At four is Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Uh, this is a horror film but a horror film with a, a, a twist. Um, it stars Jack Nicholson in the lead, lead role as Jack Torrance. Shelley Duvall plays his wife, Wendy, and Danny Lloyd plays his son, Danny. Uh, Jack gets the opportunity of some work in a uh, deserted hotel in the off-season, miles and miles from anywhere. Uh, it's cut off due to the weather and he accepts the job with glee uh, unbeknown to them is that the hotel is uh, haunted and uh, the exploits and the happenings that take place within the whole hotel to the boy uh, affect uh, significantly the behavior of the parents and we witness uh, scenes that are remarkable to say the least. It's based on a novel by Stephen King, however the uh, interpretation by Kubrick goes a long way from the original words. It's a fantastic uh, supernatural uh, flick and uh, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, it was uh, uh, neglected really to some extent by the awards people uh, Nicholson didn't even get a nod on the best actors uh, 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 podium but I suggest to you that you don't ignore it fantastic piece of work The Shining in at number three the Big Red One reconstruction uh, the original Big Red One was re released in 1980 it's written and directed by Sam Fuller and stars uh, uh, a tremendous performance by Lee Marvin as the sergeant, uh, Robert Carradine as Zab, and a host of other stars. Uh, we are in World War Two, and the movie, uh, to an extent, traces the real uh, uh, experiences of Fuller uh, as a, a soldier in World War Two. Um, he said clearly that he wanted. Uh, uh, to direct and write a war film that actually uh, started at the beginning and saw uh, the members get right through to the end and survive the ordeal and this is exactly how this um, movie unfolds um, it's a terrific piece of work and uh, it originally uh, when made by Fuller went to 270 minutes but then it was cut uh, to 113 for the box office but the reconstruction we see an extra 45 minutes added to it uh, and uh, it's certainly worth that uh, extra uh, addition as we trace uh, the sergeant from early in the war 
uh, landing in North Africa to Sicily and to Omaha Beach on D-Day and finally into Germany and the liberation of the death camps. If you are into war movies, this is one that you must get to see. It is absolutely riveting. It's a five-star movie. And uh, 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 surprisingly, or not surprisingly really, um, uh, it just didn't get a nod at all uh, at the Oscars. Um, uh, I'll never know why, but it just didn't uh, hit the headlines at all there. But don't you miss it. It is absolutely brilliant. Just on uh, the big red one, I did actually note that it uh, did get a nomination at the Cannes Film Set Festival for the Palmer Door. Okay, let's move on to number two, City of Women. This is... Uh, uh, a movie by Federic, Federico Fellini. I love this movie. Uh, Fellini, of course, throughout his uh, film career, had focused on women uh, in one shape or form. And this movie is totally dominated uh, by his interpretation of the developing uh, feminism within the female movement. Um, it's basically a film about a man who's very much uh, into uh, sexuality uh, but he's very machoistic and he's taken on a fantasy uh, by a woman that he gets attracted to on a on a train and uh, this takes him through all his fantasies and throughout he is uh, punished in some s shape or form by the women that he encounters. It's really quite a bizarre uh, a psychedelic experience, but a marvellous movie. And I really do uh, suggest that if you are a cinema matic buff that you take your time out to watch this movie the lead role is from Marcelo Mastroianni a very highly skilled uh, Italian actor who's been in many movies check it out it's called City of Women and it's directed and written by Federico Fellini so finally uh, for 1980 my favourite movie of that year and you probably guessed it by now is the Martin Scorsese uh, movie Raging Bull um, this movie I think was head and shoulders above uh, uh, movies that year and it certainly would have got my vote um, but let's just go through uh, it was nominated for best picture um, and uh, it was also nominated for best director uh, how scores 80 never went I didn't know but De Niro won for best actor and Joe Pesci was nominated for a supporting actor and Kathy Moriarty uh, for best supporting actress um, what can you say about Raging Bull it's a it's a movie about about uh, how uh, the desire for fame uh, over, overshadows your ability to see uh, the wood from the trees. We follow uh, a real life story of one Jake LaMotta, an up and cunning career boxer who rises to glory in the 40s and uh, lifts the world heavyweight middleweight the world heavy, the world middleweight championship of the world and uh, we witness how uh, he rises uh, to uh, the top of his field with the help of his brother and manager Joey played excellently by Petri uh, but we also witness his struggles with uh, personal relationships with his family with his uh, females he has tremendous problems uh, because he is very very egotistical and we then follow him post his boxing career as he tries to cut it uh, in nightclubs and he turns into some grotesque blubber of uh, a man who's really lost his way in life an absolutely riveting movie uh, in black and white the boxing scenes are as good as it's ever been in in cinema and there have been some good ones so that's my movie uh, of the year Raging Bull 
Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this first segment. We'll be going through the 80s, and I'm also going to uh, do a corresponding a new millennia from uh, 2000 through to 2010, uh, just to keep you on your toes. Alongside that, of course, I will be doing individual movie reviews, and I'm still working on now 1961 and 62, along with the new ones. Okay, that's your lot.